Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen. I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach. I'm barefaced because I just took a massive hike this morning. I'm not going anywhere today. I'm just meal prepping and editing so no need for makeup. So you get to see my natural beauty. But anyways, I am here today with another meal prep because it is Monday. Now we have a really good meal prep. It is fall inspired. It is savory and everything is a 10 out of a 10. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Turn your bell on because I do a meal prep every Monday and I actually upload five videos every single week. Don't forget to check out the description box down below for my recipe website. That is where you will find all of today's recipes and every recipe I've ever created here on my channel, as well as nutrition coaching, where I offer personalized to you macros and calories. Highly, highly recommend. This is how I've lost and maintained 140 pounds, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching to talk with me directly. Links and discounts to my favorite things, and come join our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. So let's head into the kitchen for this week's meal prep. For my breakfast this week, I'm making a butternut squash and sausage frittata. This is a nice, clean ingredient, savory, protein-packed breakfast where you're getting in your veggies, which is always a good way to start the day. So let me show you what you'll need. So you're going to need some turkey sausage of your choice. I'm just going to use Jimmy Dean turkey sausage crumbles. They're easy, they're convenient, and they actually taste really good. You'll need some salt and pepper. Baby spinach, butternut squash, I bought mine pre-cut up, pre-cubed. Again, convenience, light cheese or thin sliced cheese. You can even use regular cheese, whatever your preference. Eggs, bacon, this is just the pre-cooked bacon. I had some in my fridge ready to go. A red bell pepper and some green onions. So I have a pan sprayed with some nonstick cooking spray over medium heat. We're going to add in our chopped green onions and our chopped bell pepper, our squash, and then season that with some salt and pepper. And we're going to allow that to cook until our squash is almost all the way softened. This is going into the oven, so it doesn't have to be completely cooked through, but I would say about 80 to 90%. So now we're going to add about a cup of spinach and we're going to just let that wilt down with our squash and peppers and green onions. So here is our mixture. We're going to add that to a bowl. Allow it to cool for just a couple of minutes. Then we're going to crack 10 eggs into our squash and veggie mixture. And then I diced up four slices of that thin cheese and I'm going to add that. and then give that a stir until fully combined. I have 12 slices of bacon that I just crumbled up, so we're going to add that, and then a cup of the Jimmy Dean turkey sausage crumbles, and again, another mix. And then we're going to add that to a baking dish sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. I just have this round one. I like this one because it has a lid, so I can store my frittata in here in the fridge and put a lid on top. And then just spread that out evenly in the bottom. And then it's going into a 375 degree oven for about 50 to 55 minutes or until the eggs are cooked through. The frittata is out of the oven. Look at how amazing that looks. We have so much protein and veggies and cheese. I can't wait to have this all week. I love squash and any sort. And this is definitely comfort food, fall, savory breakfast vibe. So I'll go ahead and put serving size, points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. For my lunch this week, I'm making patty melt casserole. If you know me, fun fact, patty melts are my favorite favorite thing. I love rye bread. I love a good burger and putting those two together is perfection. This is another good savory recipe. So let me show you what you'll need. First, you're going to need light butter, steak seasoning of your choice, light or fat-free Thousand Island dressing, Worcestershire sauce, one medium onion, rye bread, 93 or 96% extra lean ground beef, and then light Swiss cheese. So the first thing we're going to do is add our pound of ground beef to a pan and allow it to brown. 
So once your ground beef is cooked through, go ahead and drain any excess grease. We're going to add about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of steak seasoning. Give that a quick stir. And then we're going to remove the ground beef from the pan. Then we're going to add our onion to that same pan and allow it to saute down. So we're going to take a nine by 13 baking dish and six slices of our rye bread. We are going to use a quarter cup of butter total and we're just going to butter one side of our slices of rye. And then we're placing that in the bottom of the baking dish. You might have to slice or dice up the bread but your goal is to have it fit evenly a nice layer in the bottom of the baking dish. Now we're going to take six slices of our Swiss and we're going to layer that on top of the bread. Again, you can tear the cheese or slice the cheese if you need to, to fill any gaps. You just want to make sure that there is cheese on all the bread. I ended up using seven slices. The recipe actually calls for 18, but I think we can get away with a little bit less. Let's see how it all comes together. And then we're actually going to add the ground beef right on top and then spread that out over the cheese. And then we're going to add the onions on top of the beef. Then we're going to add between a quarter cup and half of a cup of Thousand Island right on top. And again, you can kind of use the back of your spoon and just spread that out. And then we're going to add another layer of Swiss. Now we're going to butter six more slices of our rye bread, but we're actually going to put our bread butter side up right on top. We're going to put this in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. We're going to cover it with foil. 20 minutes in, remove the foil and allow it to cook for another 10. That will get that bread nice and crispy. So the patty melt casseroles out of the oven. I am so excited for this. It smells amazing. That rye bread smells so good. It's basically just a deconstructed patty melt sandwich for less points and calories. Our bread also is nice and crispy on top. So let me go ahead and put serving size, points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. For a dessert this week, we're kind of going savory, kind of savory sweet. We're doing a brown butter cranberry pumpkin cornbread skillet. I love cornbread and it has been a hot minute since I had cornbread. So I'm excited for this. Let me show you what you'll need. First, you're going to need all-purpose flour, sugar-free syrup, milk of your choice. I am using Fairlife for the added boost of protein, light butter, one egg. The recipe actually calls for frozen or fresh cranberries. I cannot find them anywhere. It just must not be the season for cranberries. So we're going to substitute craisins, dried cranberries. I'll explain how I make a substitution like this if the fresh isn't available. You'll need some yellow cornmeal, cinnamon, baking powder, canned pumpkin puree, vanilla, and some salt. So the first thing we're going to do is actually make the browned butter. So add your butter to a small skillet allow it to melt completely. It will start to bubble up and brown a bit, kind of emitting a nutty scent. That is what we're looking for. As soon as it bubbles, browns, and you smell that little bit of nuttiness, we are actually going to remove it directly from the pan, place it in a bowl, set it aside to cool. While the butter is cooling in a medium bowl, we're going to add our wet ingredients. So we're going to start with three quarters of a cup of canned pumpkin, one cup of milk, one egg, one third cup sugar-free syrup, and some vanilla extract, and then give that a stir. Once your butter is completely cool, do not add it in hot. Go ahead and add it to the wet mixture, and then whisk that in. Then we're going to add in our dry ingredients. So I have one and a quarter cup cornmeal, one cup flour, pinch of salt, cinnamon, and one tablespoon of baking powder. And then mix that just until combined. Just make sure you're not over mixing. 
Now because we're using dried cranberries, I'm doing half of a cup instead of a full cup, which is what we would have done if we used fresh cranberries. I am going to reserve a little bit on the side to sprinkle on top and then give that another quick stir, just fold those cranberries in. Now you can bake this in a six by six, eight by eight, nine by nine baking dish, or you can put it into a skillet, your preference. I am going to go ahead and bake mine. So I'm going to add my mixture to my sprayed baking dish. And then just spread that out nice and even. And then we're going to sprinkle those cranberries that we reserved right on top. We're going to put the cornbread into a 350 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes or until it is cooked through. All right, the cornbread pumpkin cranberry goodness is out of the oven. This smells so good. What you wanna do is slice this up, add a little bit of butter, some syrup. It's going to be the perfect sweet treat. I'll go ahead and put serving size, points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. Thank you for joining me for another weekly meal prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing these amazing savory recipes. Sometimes I want something sweet, sometimes I want something savory, and this week I was craving savory. Don't forget all of today's recipes are on my recipe website, which is down in the description box, along with nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things, and of course my Facebook group. Definitely come join us, we would love to have you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.